Hi, welcome to everyone's second favourite segment, single item mailbag, because I've got a bunch of them open, the Roden Schwartz one. Last time, got another one from Sigland here, but this one's actually been here for quite some time. I haven't got around to opening it yet. It's from Anet in China. Thank you very much for sending this in. It's a 3D printer. So I haven't done 3D printers in many years. I've still got my uh, MakerBot um, here for the little 3D printing that I do. It works fine. But this one is a resin 3D printer, which I... I don't know, they're very 2010s, aren't they? Um, anyway, I believe it was the first, well, the first sort of one that was kind of affordable was, I think, the Formlabs one. Wasn't that a Kickstarter or something like that? Anyway, I don't, I'm sure all the printer aficionados would tell us the history of that. But anyway, let's open this up. It is a, I think it's the N4 it's called. Don't quote me on that. Gotta stand up for this, get the tongue at the right angle. Ta-da! Oh! got a carry handle. Look at this. It's sideways, so all the resin's going to fall out. Um, there it is. There it is. I was right. It is the N4 Smart Light Curing 3D Printer Shenzhen Anet Technology Co. Limited. I believe its retail is about uh, $499, but I just checked the website and it's like $279 at the moment. Don't know whether or not that special lasts, but that's incredibly cheap. Obviously, it's going to be a bottom of the range resin printer, but you know, small and compact, try it out. Printing precision 40 to 100 microns, print size 120 millimeters, that is, now that an inch is rubbish, by 65 by 138, weighs 8.2 kilograms for those playing along at home. Product parameters. Independent research, development system, transmission stability, offline printing, ultra-fast slicing, and ultra-high precision. There you go. So just a brief overview of 3D printing technology. There's two major types, at least in this uh, category, which is uh, FDM or SLA. This is an SLA type, but you're probably more familiar with the FDM, which is the fused deposition model where you get ABS or some other material and squeeze it through a nozzle and you just draw out your pattern and it slowly builds it up layer by layer and you finally get your 3D print. Well, this is an SLA, which is a stereolithography uh, technique, which uses or otherwise, aka, a resin printer, because it uses a resin material that's liquid and normally, and then when you apply usually uh, ultraviolet light to it, it actually hardens up. So these resin printers are available in three different types. This one, which is an LCD type, then you've also got the DLP type, and then you've got the laser type as well. Now, in the difference between these is with, say, the laser one, it shines a laser in, bounces off a mirror, and it draws out the image of uh, each, once again, each layer. And then as it's pushed up out of the resin, it just hardens the top and then just it gets pushed out or pulled out. Uh, in this particular case, I believe this one pulls out like this. Now, that's for the lasers, but it works exactly the same way for this LCD type, which uh, uses, as the name implies, it's not because it's got yeah, it does. It does have an LCD on the front, um, but that's not where it gets its name from. LCD is because inside uh, the thing, they have a bunch of, old, well, they have some sort of ultraviolet uh, light source, probably a whole array of LEDs, and then they have an LCD uh, shutter in there that selectively lets light through each individual pixel. So then it, you can create a shine light through and actually, rather than the laser having to draw out the pattern, this shines the light through and does the whole layer at a time, it exposes it where the shutter LCD shutters open, exposes with ultraviolet light and hardens up. And then it does that for each layer and you build it up and it slowly pulls it up out of the resin and bingo, at the end, you're magically left with your final print. Now, the other type is a DLP, and you're probably familiar with DLP projectors as opposed to LCD projectors. Same difference, works exactly the same way in that it, instead of using an LCD shutter, it uses a DLP, which is little micro mirrors. I've done one in, the, I've showed you one of those under the microscope in a teardown, I think, haven't I? Uh, recently, well, a Sony camera or something like that. No, it was a, yeah, it was a mailbag camera, something like that. Anyway, DLP versus LCD, they're basically the same thing. So this is an LCD one, and it's like under 300 US bucks on sale at the moment. Let's see what it can do. I don't expect wonders, but like 40 micron precision and stuff like that. Give it a bow. All right, unboxing. We have a user manual, warranty card, a Series 3D printer. Is that like a, that was a cheat sheet or something like that? We've got 
And, oh, right, we've got rubber gloves. Very handy in today's environment. Sorry, you can't see my head. Um, that's the build. Is that the build plate? That looks like a build plate. I don't know. Never used one of these resin printers before. This is the first for me too. We've got a power adapter with a DC barrel jack. We've got a couple of big thumb screws. We've got uh, one of those weird ass Yankee plugs. So that's no good here. Uh, looks like we have a scrape, couple of scrapers, metal and plastic. There you go. We've got a USB stick. I'll download the latest uh, software. Let's get this bad boy out of here. That's all she wrote. Look at this. Looks the part and looks like they've wrapped it. <laughs> wrapped it all up. Great. All right. So it's very, oh, that's nicely protected. Very nice. Very nicely protected. There we go. Look at that. So that, does that sit upside down like that? I'm not sure. And then we've got a build plate. And we've got a build plate. That's where we put our resin in there. <laughs> Listen to that. Wow. Talk into it and it you just get a weird echoey thing. That's really quite cool. So that's an alloy outer case. That build plate is very nice. Alloy outer thing. So there you go. That's it. And then ooh, we peel that off. And that's where our ultraviolet light's going to shine out of there. And this thing just raises up like this. Great thing about this is the simplicity of it. This just raises up and that's it. There's no directional stuff. Incredibly simplistic. So oh, let's go to the bench. Hang on. There's one thing I'm not finding in here. And that is the resin itself. Ah, uh, Bueller. 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 Wah, 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 wah. Guess this video goes on the second channel because I'm not going to be able to make this thing work. Unbelievable. Crikey, now I know why they didn't include the resin. Because it's bloody well more expensive than the bomb cost of this thing. Unbelievable. Ah, well, I've ordered some. In the meantime, play tear down. Let's go. Uh, if you want a closer up look, here it is. I don't know the quality of these things. I don't think it's going to be much. Doesn't you know, doesn't feel like uh, super high quality to me. Anyway, let's have a look down here. I like the power button. Oh, that's sexy. All right. Anyway, we've got a, a USB port. I don't like. It's not. I don't think it's networky in any way, unless it's uh, Wi-Fi. I don't know looked at the manual or whatever anyway i maybe just whack it on a stick and i assume it comes with software and you can just put it on a stick and it just prints perhaps anyway 405 nanometers uv uh, it's typical for these things and 60 watts total power yeah and looks like it's got a couple of fans as well and the spare sheets we got in the packet are for this puppy and it looks like you've got to undo these screws and it just like uh, it puts, like you put it over and then this goes in here and it just seals right around the outside. That's what gives it that nice tension like that. But you'd have to do them up all evenly, I'd presume. Aha, the fans on the bottom. So those uh, back holes, they're just vents, I think. Just unscrew a bunch of these on top and we should be in. All right. Looks like... Yeah, just what I expected. The guts is going to lift out and we're in like Flynn. That's it. We've just got the one main board down there. That's it. And we're obviously with the big heatsink here. This is going to be our uh, UV lead. That'll be just be like a, uh, like a big cob type and there'll be an LCD. Yep, that connects up the, that's right. That's actually on the uh, top surface up the top. I should expect so it's a bit fiddly and inside the die cast box don't have too many issues there or it looks all neat and tidy no wackers not entirely sure the top of this lead screw is just flapping around in the breeze there um i'm not sure what effect that's going to have on like uh you know the leveling the performance of this thing if anyone knows um please let us know because this is not my forte it, uh, yeah, I, I would have expected that to, like, at least be, like, in its own thing at the top, perhaps? Or is it the actual, um, shaft inside here 
that keeps it level, I guess. So, I, you know, yeah, I suppose that's not a problem, actually. Yeah, it's going to be inside here that does the business, I suspect. But if anyone uh, knows otherwise, please leave it in the comments. None of this stepper motor rubbish. It's a step motor. <laughs> Single step. Uh, it's Anet branded, so um, yeah, it's just your regular Nema put the kettle on type. I swear I have not taken a screwdriver to that. Um, <laughs> that's just flapping around in the breeze. Lucy goosey. Look at that. That's terrible, Muriel. Uh, what's going on down here? There's a ribbon connector and there's this, like, bracket thing is that kind of like holding the top of the ribbon down or what Ugh, don't like that at all what's going on there and as for the pcb down there well the build quality seems fine enough i don't know I'll leave it in the comments down below somebody i just posted a photo of this on uh, twitter you've got to follow me on twitter because this is where i post uh just like photo random photos and stuff like that and yes i do have an instagram account i've just started my instagram modeling career so check that out <clears throat> anyway up to, yeah actually i have <laughs> really there's a post over there um <laughs> don't use it anyway um yeah i look leave it in the comments down below uh somebody on twitter said that you know a net it's probably going to like burn my lab down or something like that um i don't know how true that is but anyway um yeah thermally i don't know this isn't going to be a review because we're not going to be using this thing because i don't have the resin got a card slot there is that for like uh firmware upgrades or something like that i would presume because that doesn't poke uh, to the outside, did I? I didn't see any slot for that, so anyway, there's the controller. Yeah, it's got a Spartan 6 and an R uh, and ST arm, <laughs> no surprises. And there's your UV LEDs, we've got four of them, and is that like four die per uh, LED there? Perhaps? Let me get the macro. Yeah, there you go. A bit distorted due to the uh, dome lens on top but uh, yeah it looks like four individual elements you can see the uh, die bonds down in there as well so i don't know if you have any idea what brand these are or whatever let us know in the comments down below but yeah you know i wouldn't expect like Cree or anything and then not so sure if you can see down in there but we've got our lcd panel that's what the ribbon cable is going there for and well uh no point tearing that down any further um because that could i don't know muck something up and i'm not too fussy if you know a particular um lcd type it is in these types of things once again if you've got a data sheet leave it in the comments but you can see why they uh, can sell these for like uh, 279 us dollars it's just a die cast case pcb a big uh like four main uh, uv leds and some you know like custom metal and stuff like that and an lcd in there and like you know lead screw stepper motor and that's it um there's not much else to these things they're really quite uh, simplistic so I'm, I'm sure it works i'm sure it gives us a print like how good it is compared to other ones and stuff like that i don't know but uh anyway I'm sure there's plenty of these a net reviews out there so yeah meh what do you want me to do? I'm not going to even power this thing up before I get the uh, resin. Couldn't be bothered. So there you go. I was hoping to use it today, but they didn't include the resin. So anyway, I've got some on order, so maybe I'll do a second video. It's probably not even main channel worthy. I don't know. Whatever. Yeah, I've got a, a cheap-ass resin printer. If you've got one of these, please leave it in the comments. Are they any good? Um, are they worth the 500 bucks uh, retail US, uh, let alone the, uh, or even the 279 uh, retail US? What is the best one out there? Going for the price. I, I know there's, you know, Form Labs and they're, uh, they're pretty much one of the uh, top ones, aren't they? But yeah, are these any good? let us know and yes each type of uh, material the resin versus the uh, fdm they both and the abs and the other type of plastics that you can extrude and other materials nowadays geez they've got a material for everything don't they they can uh, extrude it's absolutely amazing isn't there like a wood like look one or something it's just ah it's nuts these days anyway i don't keep up with the joneses hope you liked the video if you did give it a big thumbs up as always discuss down below Check out my library channel, 14,000 subs. Catch you next time. Oh, all right. Does it actually turn on? Anet 3D printer. It's not the brightest thing going around. 
touchy feely printing tool. There we go. Well, <laughs> that's that's a bit how you're doing. Uh, it's not even secured in there properly. Wow. Anyway, we can move the sucker up and down. Let's move it up. 10 millimeters, shall we? There it goes. Oh, wow. So much fun. I assume it's got an end stop. <laughs> will it auto detect or will it just slam on the bottom? Be hilarious if it... Nah. There you go. No, it does. It... Oh, what? It went up. I didn't press up. UV detection, uh, UV detection, UV timer, I guess, because it's setting the exposure time, which is quite important. I've heard like, you know, anywhere from like, yeah, three to eight seconds, 10 seconds, something like that. Um, and you've got to experiment with that and get it uh, just right. So I've heard, oh, image detection. Ah, okay. I assume it tried to detect something. Huh? How does it detect something? I don't know. And then print in file list information. Version 1.65 for those playing along at home. 